hope you are well. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Trisha Miller. I upload new videos every Tuesday and Saturday. So if you like today's video, I hope you'll hit that subscribe button. For today, I'm gonna bring you guys along throughout the week. I'm gonna show you five of my family's favorite, healthy, tasty, busy weeknight dinners. What I will do as I'm cooking each night, I will talk to you about different secrets that I have to make a meal kid friendly. I will link all of the recipes in the video description box below for you. And I'll let you know if I swap anything out or make any changes. And I will obviously show you at the end of each meal what it looks like. Let's get started. All right, for our lasagna skillet dinner tonight, you need some bow tie pasta. You could also do whole grain there, some garlic, extra lean ground beef, or you could do ground turkey. You could also sub and just do vegetarian, low sodium chicken broth, diced tomatoes, tomato sauce, fat-free cottage cheese, part skim mozzarella shredded cheese, dried oregano, dried onion, salt, pepper, and then at the end, we're gonna sprinkle some Parmesan on top, and then on the side, I'm going to make a pumpkin honey cornbread. So I'm gonna add some pumpkin puree to this and a couple, a little bit of the pumpkin pie spice. Okay, to start out, you're going to take some garlic and saute it with some olive oil. I only did about a half of a teaspoon of garlic because my family's not a huge fan. The recipe calls for a lot more. I think it's about three teaspoons. And again, I will have the recipes linked in the video description box below. But you're gonna add in your meat of choice. Lean ground beef is what I use. You could do lean ground turkey. And you're gonna get that mixed in with, all, with the garlic and with all the seasonings. And then we're going to add our tomato sauce, our diced tomatoes. You could do chicken broth or water. I did chicken broth just to add a little extra flavor since I didn't do as much garlic. And this could be gluten-free recipe. I use regular pasta, but you could use gluten-free pasta. You could also make this vegetarian. And instead of having the meat, I would just add some extra vegetables to bulk it up, like some zucchini and some squash. And I think that would be really, really good. And so you're gonna put all this together and then you're gonna let that simmer for about 15 minutes. And while that is simmering, I'm gonna get started on my pumpkin cornbread muffins. And all I did for this, I used the Krusty's honey cornbread mix. I'm following the box directions as far as adding the vegetable oil and the egg. And then I'm going to add for my pumpkin flavor an entire can of pumpkin puree, one teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice, and a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. These are so good. It has just a little mild sweet pumpkin flavor to it, just almost like a pumpkin pie kind of a sweetness. It's just put a little butter on there. Oh my gosh, those muffins were gone very quickly. Okay, after about 15 minutes, when your pasta is nice and cooked, we're going to mix that up. I'm going to add a cup of fat-free cottage cheese. It just adds some extra health benefits to it. Your kids will not know it's in there, I promise. You can't even taste it. So if you're somebody who just is kind of weird about cottage cheese, this is one of those recipes where you won't even know it's in there. And then we're gonna hide it even more by adding some mozzarella to the top. I did a part skim milk mozzarella for mine to make it a little bit less fat. And then I added just a little dabble of Parmesan cheese to the top. This recipe is so good. It's also so good the next day. It's one of those recipes where it's good the first time you eat it, but then when you heat it up for leftovers, it somehow has gotten even more flavorful and it makes a lot of servings. So this is a really good one if you're making something like a, a meal for a friend who just had a baby or something like that. It's also just good so that you can have leftovers throughout the week for a meal prep. Highly recommend this dinner. Good morning. It is early in the morning right now for our crock pot dump and go dinner. So all you need are two to three chicken breasts, depending on the size of your family, some red potatoes, and look at this one. It's in the shape of a heart. How special is that? And some green beans, one packet of onion seasoning soup, just the soup and the dip mix, 
And then the recipe that I originally started a couple years ago asked for like six tablespoons of butter. I cut that in half. I just do three tablespoons of butter and I think the flavor is amazing. You could also do, if you don't have onion, you could do a ranch packet. All right, let's get this in the crock pot and get our day going. This dinner is as easy as it gets. It's just the perfect dump and go on a cozy fall or cozy winter morning. I make this multiple times a month and my whole family loves it. It's so flavorful. All you have to do is put your chicken breast in. I did spray, nonstick spray in my crock pot. I cut up some red potatoes. I've done russet potatoes as well. They both are delicious bag of green beans. I buy the ones that are pre-washed and pre-cut just to save even more time. And then you pour your onion soup mix across the top. I cut the butter into really small pieces and just lay them sporadically throughout. And then it's done in four hours. I like to do mine on low, so I'll set it for six hours, but I'll let it go to warm after four hours. Oh, the flavor on this one, you guys. It is just such a good one. It's so easy for those busy, busy nights. You gotta try this one. Please let me know in the comments if you try it, what you think. Okay, let me show you all the ingredients that you will need. And again, recipe will linked, be linked to the video description box below for you. So pepper, salt, extra virgin olive oil, 12 eggs, a sea potato, I've already gotten this cleaned and peeled. We're gonna get ready to cut that up. Whatever milk of choice you want, I just always use the almond milk for stuff, so I'm just gonna throw that one in. Now, the recipe will call for ground sausage. We prefer the Applegate brand and then just the links and I'm gonna cut them up. I will pre-cook this really quickly in the air fryer for just like five minutes to get it heated up and then I'll just cut that up. And then garlic, red bell pepper, onion, and some kale. All right, let's get going. All right, there's a little background story with this recipe. When I made it for the first time, I made it for Steven and I for a breakfast meal prep and we were eating it and the kids wanted to try a bite. I thought, okay, they obviously have not realized that there's kale in this, so I'm just gonna let them take a bite. They'll tell me they hate it, they'll spit it out, all those things. Well, they didn't. They tried a bite and they wanted more of it. And so I added it to our lineup. We do breakfast for dinner probably about once a week. And so I made it for dinner thinking, okay, they probably won't like it the second time, just setting the expectations into reality with kids. And they did. And so now it's just a part of our lineup and the kids really like it. And I think it's because the sweet potato makes it a sweet, savory breakfast casserole. Like you really don't taste the kale. There's no crunch to the kale. It just, it's, and if you cut it really, really small, that's usually one of my hidden secrets with kids getting to the eat vegetables. Just cut them really, really small and they tend to not notice that they're even inside of a recipe. But this is a family favorite. It's also really nice to, like a breakfast, you could make it on Christmas morning or just have it be one of those breakfast casseroles for special occasions. It, it, it's a good one, guys, I'm telling you. And so just to back up now to walk you through what I did. So I pre-cut my sweet potatoes. I cooked them in the air fryer. You could also roast them in your oven. You just want to cook them before you add them to the casserole. I cut my kale as small as humanly possible. I sauteed my onions and my garlic. And then I am now cracking all the eggs. You need a whole dozen eggs for it. You could cut this recipe in half, true, if you like didn't need like a massive casserole. You could easily cut all of this in half and just have something small. But I like to do this because then I use the leftovers for meal prep for breakfast for the next couple of days. And that works out really nice. And so you're just going to put everything into your casserole dish. I did spray my casserole dish with some um, olive oil spray just so it didn't stick. I'm adding everything in. The recipe that I'm going to link does have the ground sausage like I mentioned before. I just like to cut up the sausage links for the kind that I know my family will like. And that's a sweeter sausage too, which I think blends well with all the flavors. And then we're just gonna add our eggs. Now, this is a dairy-free recipe as is. However, I know my audience with my family and if I put cheese on it, 
they are happy. So I do have to add cheese to the top of ours, but you don't have to. I think it would be so good without the cheese, but it's also really good with the cheese. So whatever works for your family, but I do add that cheese to the top of mine that's not in the recipe. And if you need a dairy-free, this is a really good one. You just don't put the cheese on it. I like to add the cinnamon rolls to the side. I think that the main course is just such a healthy dinner to begin with. And we are a family that does love to have dessert almost every single night. It's usually something small, but the cinnamon rolls definitely serve as the dessert for that. And they're so easy when you just buy them in the can. My favorite type are the Annie's brand, but this grocery store was out of them. So I believe these are just the Pillsbury ones, but they're still good. My kids did not complain about eating them. And I just love putting the icing on them. It just reminds me of my childhood. We would do this and I would get to do the icing. And then I would lick that little container at the end with any last drop of icing that was left behind. Anybody else? Anyway, so I'm just adding those to the side. Super simple, super delicious and easy and healthy dinner that everybody loved. And I am gonna show you proof. Liam wanted me to film him eating it to show everybody out there that he loves this casserole. I will show you that. Morning friends, just got the kids on the bus, so I'm going to get dinner in the crock pot for tonight. If you've been to Olive Garden, you will recognize the name of this soup, but it's a copycat version of the Olive Garden pasta e fagioli soup. It's so good. It's savory, it's sweet, it's filling. My kids will all eat it, so that's the added bonus. So here are the main ingredients for this, and I'll tell you about some shortcuts that I do and also ways that I hide some of the healthy benefits of it so that my kids will actually eat it vegetables. You're going to need carrots to save time. I just do baby carrots and they're already peeled and ready to go. You're going to need some celery and some onion. And what I will do is I will take all of these and I will put them in my food processor. So it chops up the carrots and the celery and the onion really, really small. And then my kids don't really know that they're in there. My kids like carrots, but they have this thing. Maybe your kids are the same way. If there are large chunks of things in their soup, they don't want anything to do with it. So when I blend it up in my food processor, it just makes it so small that it almost blends in with the broth and they have no idea it's in there. So I'm gonna do that today for the soup. If you're okay with the chunks, just cut it up like normal. So then we'll get that going. We need, I'm gonna do lean ground beef. You could also make this with lean ground turkey if you wanted to eliminate the red meat. I'm gonna cook the ground beef in the skillet. So that will save time by just pre-cooking the meat, getting it in there. So if you need this to be done a little bit faster, you could have this cooked in probably about three hours in your crock pot. I have all day, so I'm just gonna let it simmer on low all day, but you could put it on high with the meat pre-cooked and it could be done in up to three hours, maybe even less depending on your crock pot. All right, so we're gonna get the meat going. The other ingredients that we're gonna add to this, and then once you cook the meat, it becomes a dump and go situation in your crock pot. We're gonna put some spaghetti sauce in. The recipe I use always calls for Prego. I also grew up using this brand of spaghetti sauce, so it's kind of my go-to. But I just do the lower sodium. Two types of beans, you're gonna have red kidney beans, white kidney beans. We're gonna add some petite diced tomatoes to this, some beef broth. I just always go for the lower sodium variety when I'm getting things like that. And then when we have about 30 minutes left before you're ready to eat this, that's when you're gonna add the pasta. It's just the Ditalini pasta. You could put any type of small pasta you want in there, whatever your kids prefer. As far as seasoning, super simple. Some oregano, some parsley, salt, pepper. I just love to add a little bit of garlic salt to mine as well, just to give a little extra flavor to it. And that's it. And what we will do, once that cooks, we'll put it in the bowl. We like to sprinkle Parmesan cheese on top, and then I do some type of bread in the oven. Sometimes it's breadsticks, sometimes it's garlic bread. Sometimes it's just like a crusty French bread in the oven. It's just a nice little side. All right, let's get this in the crock pot and then get on with our day. 
My favorite part about Crock-Pot slow cooker meals is how amazing your house smells once they've been cooking for a few hours. Nothing beats coming home after a busy day and dinner is just done and waiting for you and it just smells so good. So this it really is just a dump and go. You do not have to do this part where you where I'm blending up all the vegetables. That's truly just to meet my family's needs and to know that everybody is going to eat this dinner. You could just throw everything in as is and you'd be good to go. That's just what I need to do for my family. So once you cook that meat, just put everything in. I will say I have made this, like if you have to do a low carb or you need gluten free, meaning you don't wanna put the pasta in there. I have made this without the pasta before because I thought we had some and we were out of it and it was still good. It's still a hearty soup with or without the pasta. You could also do gluten-free pasta inside of it if you wanted to do that and keep it gluten-free. But this recipe is so good. If you've been to Olive Garden, it tastes just like it. It's one of my favorite soups there. And so when I found this copycat recipe years ago, I was so excited. And it truly is one of those recipes that tastes just like the one inside of the restaurant. I do wanna warn you though that it does make a massive amount of soup, the recipe that I'm gonna link below. So you could easily half the recipe. I believe it calls for two pounds of ground beef and I never do that. I just do one pound of the lean ground beef. I've made this with ground turkey also, by the way, and it's just as good. Um, but you could half everything and still have plenty of dinner and plenty of leftovers. It makes a ton of soup. So another good option for meal prep or freezing it. I've done that. If you're gonna freeze it, I would not add the pasta in. So what I would do is I would cook the pasta separately, not add it to the main soup, and then just fill each bowl with a little bit of pasta and then put the soup on top. Because when you freeze pasta, it just, it tends to absorb all that moisture inside of the soup and it just doesn't reheat well. So if you're gonna do that, just don't add the pasta. Okay, ingredients for tonight's dinner. You need some mushrooms. I just got pre-sliced to save time, but you can certainly just buy them and slice them yourself. A bag of frozen peas and carrots. You're gonna need a couple cups of pulled chicken. Again, I got, for time's sake, already pre-cooked, ready to go chicken. We are going to need some fresh rosemary, an onion, a couple tablespoons of butter, some garlic, for seasoning, just some basic salt and pepper and then also some poultry seasoning. Recipe calls for whole milk. I never buy whole milk, so we're gonna use 2%, some flour, some panko, and then the last thing is just your spaghetti squash. I already pre-cooked this, obviously. All you have to do is take one, slice it in half, remove all the seeds, and then I do a little bit of olive oil, some salt and pepper, and I baked it in the oven at 375 degrees for one hour. If you don't want to, have to spend all the time for that, just simply buy it frozen and they already have spaghetti squash already frozen and shredded and ready to go for you. All right, let's make this. I mentioned before it's definitely a time saver if you just buy the spaghetti squash frozen and ready to go but I do want to mention my love of spaghetti squash if you have not tried it before it's such a good replacement when you're making spaghetti I just use it in place of the noodles I also will do recipes where I cook the spaghetti squash like I showed you guys and then I'll add things like sloppy joe to the top of it with a little bit of cheese and put it back in the oven or even just spaghetti sauce on top of that with a little bit of cheese and bake it in the oven and it's almost like a spaghetti squash boat. It's just, it's so good. So many options with that. So 
as you saw, I just melted my butter in my skillet. I added the onions and cooked for about 10 minutes until my onions were really, really soft. Then I stirred in the garlic and cooked it for about one minute. And now I'm adding the mushrooms, some salt and pepper, the poultry seasoning, and the rosemary. And I'm gonna cook that for probably about five minutes. Oh, and the flour, sorry, I forgot the flour. And I'm gonna cook that for about five minutes, make sure everything's nice and cooked. And then I'm gonna slowly pour my milk in and get that. That's where I'm gonna start to get that creaminess. And then that's gonna cook for about three to four minutes. And then I will finally add in my chicken. I would say rotisserie chicken would probably be delicious in this. You saw that I bought the pre-cooked chicken from my Walmart grocery delivery and that was delicious. If you're crunched for time, absolutely just go for a nice rotisserie chicken. You could probably use the entire chicken in there because I added a hefty amount of chicken and it was perfect. And then once we get that cooked up, we are going to add it in a large bowl to our spaghetti squash and then we're gonna pour it into a casserole dish. I did a nine by 13 that I did spray with nonstick cooking spray. And then I'm going to add some panko breadcrumbs to the top of that and then just a little bit more of the Parmesan and then we're gonna pop it in the oven. One of my favorite things about this recipe is you feel like you're having a comfort meal, but it's a healthy comfort meal. And it's hard to find that balance sometimes. And this truly is just such a healthy dish and it's so good. So much for watching i hope this gives you some new ideas to try with your own family and hopefully a couple nights a week it will save you from having to make multiple dinners for everybody and definitely let me know in the comments if you want to see another video like this if you haven't hit that subscribe button hit that subscribe button i have a bunch of fun stuff coming up i'm going to be doing a party prep for liam's ninth birthday party i'm going to be doing some thanksgiving recipes come november so many good things coming i'll see you guys next time <music>